So Charlotte has reached its uh, 100th homicide. Why am I not surprised? I'm not. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me put this disclaimer out here right now, right? So um, what I'm about to say, it may be unpleasant to you all. You might not like my opinion. You might not like my take. And you might go to the extreme of saying to yourself, Hey man, I'm going to unsubscribe to Langston 2092's channel. I'm just going to let you know because I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to be brutally honest. And it's just that plain and simple. Whether you like it or not. Let's go. Um, I stay in Still Creek. So when I hear uh, somebody getting shot on Betty's Fort. When I'm looking at the WTVD news and I'm, I'm hearing that somebody got shot and killed on Betty's Fort Road, it's really numb, numbing to me. You know, um, I think about it, but then again, I don't think about it. The reason why is because I have a family that I have to protect and defend. I have a family that depends on me. I have to go out there and make money in order to pay the rent, in order to pay the water bill, in order to pay the light bill. Car note, car insurance. So I don't have time in this capitalist society to be thinking about somebody that got killed. And I'm, I can't say I'm sorry, it's just the truth. It's numbing to me. So when I saw on the news that we reached a hundred people that got killed, it was nothing to me. It was nothing. It's if you don't physically see it for yourself. I mean, if it does not affect your life every day, what can you say? Now, some people may say, hey, listen, you need to get out there and make a difference because that can happen to you in your household. And it's a possibility, even though Still Creek, even even though areas such as Still Creek, Valentine, Huntersville, South Park, and the list goes on, are safe areas, anything can pop off at any given time. So you're correct about that. But at the end of the day, that is not my problem. And the reason why I say it's not my problem is because I'm only one man. And as we see, we have community leaders and the community leaders haven't ended police brutality. The community leaders haven't ended systemic racism. The communi community leaders have not ended drugs that's being pushed in our community. So one man cannot do it alone. And it's not my job to take on a battle that I know I'm going to lose. But what can happen is the government, our local government, can change things. Our local government. It has the resources to go inside the communities and educate the people that's in the community on how to eat, how to uh, apply for a job, how to conduct yourself, hygiene, etc. So it is up to the local, to our local government to provide programs for those that are in communities, in minority communities, in order that those minorities will have the opportunity to live the American life, the so-called American dream. But I'm here to tell you, it's like, it wasn't like when I heard, you know, we reached a hundred people, I'm like, okay, well, hey, I mean, what you want me to do? You want me to celebrate that hundred people died today? Excuse me, not today, I'm sorry. Th throughout the year, we got two, month, two more months to go. And I know for a fact, based on Charlotte's record, that it, there will be more murders, plain and simple. I don't know what to say, you know? 
I can't say, can't we all just get along? Because Rodney King said that. I can't say put down the guns because the moms that have have um, had their sons been killed by by uh, uh, violence. They say that all the time on a local on our on our local news, all the time. I see. I've seen so many moms get on TV, on our local news, and say the same thing. We need to put down the guns. My son didn't deserve this. Blah 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 blah. And, and listen, I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. I'm just telling you that at the end, at the end of the day, there's a thing called systemic racism. There's a thing called police brutality. There's a thing called redlining, and the list goes on. That black or rather minorities has to have to face. And the only entity that can change that is our local government. Now, yeah, true indeed, you may have <laughs> CPMD comes in, you know, communities like Hidden Valley and they'll throw block parties and they'll have balloons and activities for the kids to, you know, have and they run and play in and then cops are taking pictures with little kids and the community leaders are talking to the cops and you know it's one big joyful moment that's being captured on WTVD 11 news next week after that the cops are no longer present in that community unless there's a murder and it makes no sense to me you want me to be empathetic when I see a minority murdered on television, on the news, right? But you don't want to hold our local government accountable for anything. They're just as much as the blame as the shooter because they know what's going on. And this is the reason why I say what I say as far as dealing with Charlotte. I continue to push and promote this 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 thing where I say Charlotte is a beautiful place to, to stay. Right? Me and Pr Pretty Ricky and I have agreed that it is one of the most beautiful places that we've ever stayed in. Ever. And I've stayed in quite a few states and cities. And I can tell you that Charlotte's infrastructure is sound. That they know exactly what they want to do in the present and near future and that all of this is designed that they know what they're doing and they know the repercussions behind what they're doing negative or positive so Charlotte is a beautiful city and if I were to say Charlotte was a female right I'll say that Charlotte it's beautiful. She has, she's very curvaceous. Her skin glows. She's so beautiful. She, she talks so elegantly. She knows how to walk amongst the crowd and mingle with everyone, no matter what race you are. That's in the daytime. But in the night, she takes off all of her morals and principles and puts on her tight dress, her skin tight dress. And she walks that block because she's a whore. In other words, what I'm saying is there, there's a, there's two sides to Charlotte. And we tend to paint the nice, beautiful, perfect Charlotte to everybody. We push that but we don't push that other one. The one that comes out at night and tricks off, sucks. Sucks off for money. No, we don't promote that. I told you all I was gonna be brutally honest. Some of you all, and this is relevant to what, 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 what I'm talking about. Some of you all want me to go inside the community, like the hoods, right? And record. And show you all the hood. What do I look like? This is the third time I'm going to say this. What do I look like taking a camera in an area 
that I, I'm familiar with. I drive through there, for an example, West the West End, in particular, West Boulevard. I drive through there. I'm familiar with it, but I'm not from there. So here we have a light-skinned dude with dreads. And I didn't dye my hair. My hair is orange. It turns colors. But I don't do that. I don't dye my hair. But according to these hood dudes, we got this fruity looking dude. High yellow dude. Orange and red dreads with a cannon or a GoPro going around with a microphone saying, yo, you from the hood, da 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 this what I look like, man. What I look like. You can drive, let me tell you something. You can drive coming from South End, going on on down into West Boulevard. And you can look on the left hand side and you can see what them dudes are doing. You think I'm gonna record them? And they have cell phones. Charlotte is widespread, don't get me wrong. If you live in Steel Creek and a person lives in Valentine, you're never gonna see them. I got a cousin, I have a cousin, I got two cousins right now. I've never seen them. I've been living in Charlotte. Okay, so this is, is I, I've stayed here twice. So the first time I stayed, I lived here for four years. I, I moved to Atlanta for about two and a half and I came back. So a total of five to six years I've been living in Charlotte. And I've never seen neither one of my cousins. You wanna know why? Because still, I stay in Steel Creek and they stay in the university area. I'm not willing to drive all the way down to the university area. It's just not gonna happen. But let's just say for the sake of the conversation that I lived on Freedom Drive and these dudes lived on West Boulevard, right? Nine times, no, I'll say seven times out of 10, we're gonna bump into each other. We're gonna bump into each other. I might go to one of the Chinese food restaurants off of uh, Wilkerson Boulevard. I might go to that Jamaican restaurant off of Ashley, Ashley Road. I might go to the South End because, yeah, it ain't hood over there. It's straight up millennials. But every now and then, you may see some hood people over there that just be chilling because they got nice bars and stuff. I recorded them. They have cell phones. They look on the cell phone. They like, oh, yo, that's that, that's that short, that's that little punk ass. He was recording us? End it. Let me tell you something. Let me explain something to you about Charlotte dudes. I'm going to give you a great example. So I seen um, the baby, right? The rapper. I seen that he was at a, a, a video. Sh you know, he was recording a video um, at, uh, uh, in Atlanta, in a community, you know, in Atlanta. And he was smoking weed and he, he was talking to these dudes, right? And the dudes was like, yo, you need to check in. And the baby was very calm and collective. There wasn't none of his boys around. He's like, what? Nah, man, you know, I'm a grown man. I, I don't check in. So he's going on having a conversation with these dudes. And it's, it's five or six of them. And the baby is calm and collective, smoking like, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'm telling you, that type of mentality, that's how these dudes are in Charlotte. They're not gonna back down from no one. And they are cool. <laughs> they are cool. But don't take their coolness for weakness. They will go from one to 100. Period. I want no, I don't want no parts of that. I don't. So therefore I stay out of the hood. Period. That's where those murders or homicides go down. That plain is simple. I want to address something else. Period. Um, I did, and I'm going to leave it in the description box for those that didn't see the tours. I did uh, a tour around Charlotte, parts 1 through 19. I showed you all the nice areas, not the bad areas. If you want to stay in the hood, be my guest. But you're going to let me get this right. You're coming from out of town and you want to move in the hood and don't nobody know you? Uh, that, was, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, 
I showed people the nice areas to stay in Charlotte, right? And I'm here to tell you, if you want to stay in places like Ballantyne, Steel Creek, Huntersville, um, South Park, and the list goes on, you're going to at least need about fourteen to $2,000. 1400 to $2,000 a month. Period. Um, I stay in a three bedroom, two and a half bath, uh, garage, front yard, back. I'm paying, well, I was paying $1,450, but I renewed the lease, so therefore they bumped it up to an extra hundred, so I'm, I'm paying $1,550. Period. Um, you can live here if you want to pay $600, $800 $800 rent, but you're going to be staying in the hood. It's just that plain and simple. It's nothing complicated about it. Uh, Charlotte is gentrifying their neighborhoods. You know, um, one thing that me and Pretty Ricky, you know, talked about is that the way that Charlotte is gentrifying the neighborhoods is they're kind of like giving the minorities a, a, a time to just adjust. And if you can live there, if you can afford to live there, you can live there. If you can't, we're going to give you enough time for you to move out. That's not normal in a regular uh, city. Normally, gentrification happens and all of the people get kicked out. That's where you, this is the reason why you see a lot of New Yorkers migrating down south. Brooklyn is not Brooklyn anymore. That plain and simple. Brooklyn is Disneyland in comparison to what it was 20, 30 years ago. Period. I remember, listen, listen. I'm gonna do these videos about New York and when I used to live there. I remember Times Square used to be a place where they, they used to show uh, porno flicks, porno movies, there were prostitutes, all types of crazy stuff going on in Times Square. Now, it's Disneyland. That plain and simple. But in the 90s, um, well, in the, in, the, in, the, in the 80s, that's what was going on when I was telling you. Prostitutes, porn, porno, pornography flicks and stuff like that in the movie theaters and all that, right? But in the 90s, it transitioned, it kind of cleaned up, but then you can get robbed down there. You understand? They were robbing ter uh, tourists down there. Now it's Disneyland. Hey, listen, man. I can't stop systemic racism. I can't stop redlining. I can't stop police brutality. I can't stop none of these things. There's going to have to be a, an effort on the behalf of the community as well as our local government in order to stop this from happening. Um, I think that Charlotte has so much potential that it can be the leader and other cities can follow. This is the reason why I'm so hard, pause, on Charlotte, because we shouldn't be at 100 murders. We shouldn't, but we are. Is it less than the average major cities, such as New York, Los Angeles, Miami, Houston? Yes. But then we try, what, 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 what we doing, Donald Trump in this? Well, you know, the, the, the China, because there ain't coronavirus with Donald Trump. The China virus, the China, it's only killed a, such, a certain amount. But 200,000 people is, is still people. Just like 100 people died. That's still people. That's still a precious life that has been lost. We gotta do better. So for those that wanna move here, I'm telling you, you can move here, but you might wanna move in safe places, such as your Ballantyne, your Steel Creek, your Huntersville, et cetera. I hope I've um, been uh, some great, great help to you. Um, other than that, I want you to like, subscribe, and definitely share this video. Charlatans out there, if I said anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section.